Yeah, what you doing? Do you have to be part of the video? You do? You said because you're a friend, that's why? Today I will be showing how to make these cute little adorable crochet mini donuts. You could turn it into a keychain like this. Or what I'm doing with these is actually using them as a method to put in my little donut bags. <laughs> and hello, Mr. Helper. Hello, Freya. Freya said that he is distinctively going to be part of this video, and that's final. And he is my fur, orange fur overlord, so I cannot disobey him. Isn't that right, sir? Mm-hmm. Mama said it. So, what you will do is you start with a basic chain stitch. And I like to chain, how many do I chain? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Depending on how big you want your, your donut, you will start with that. Um, for me, I'm making them many, so I'm going to make seven stitches. I'm going to join into the first stitch. And because this is a stuffed toy, I'm not really concerned about back stitches, front stitches, or keeping this super straight because, no, I'm not. So, I like to do a single crochet. And then for this... You're just going to do single crochet or single crochets, two in each of your foundation row until you get to the beginning. So once you have that, you're going to have a little itty bitty donut right here. So what you're going to do here is I like to do a row of singles and do a increase in the third stitch or so. So single crochet in one stitch, then single crochet in the next, and then two single crochets in the following stitch. And this is a second row out of three. You want it to be a little bit flared, but you don't want it to be like super, like you don't want to ruffle, but you do want it because we're going to, this is essentially the dough color. And this yarn brand is Loops and Threads from Michaels. I actually very much enjoy this thread, actually. Very soft, very economic as well. So I'm at the beginning of my row. And I am the type of person who does not like to not my thread when I'm changing colors unless it's absolutely necessary. I typically don't. However you like to change your colors is up to you. I feel pretty secure in my method of doing this. I've not had things come apart. So what you wanna do is you're going to start as if you're gonna do another single crochet and then you're going to do a, take your yarn your changing color. This is your frosting color. And you're gonna pull it through as if you're gonna complete that color. I like to secure it with a chain and then take a pair of scissors and cut your old color off, which of course my scissors are in my office. Why would I have this planned well? You can't have nice things. So, you're gonna snip your end, leave about, about an inch or so. You don't need anything crazy. And what you're going to do from here is you're gonna make sure you have your itty bitty tail and have it down because what we're gonna do is actually work your single crochets over that tail. And this is what helps secure the actual tail to ensure that it doesn't unravel and you don't need to knot it. So we're gonna do that. And I'm doing, this one I'm gonna just actually do a double single crochet in the fourth stitch. I will see you at the beginning of this row. 
we're at the beginning of the row and right now you see have nice little flare hair so i like to do this in three for the dough color and three for the frosting so this is our second of three rows obviously we need to decrease so i'm going to do a single crochet here single crochet here and then i'm going to do a single crochet decrease stitch which is basically when you go into one stitch okay so you're gonna go and i'll blurry go into one pull through and instead of just pulling through like you usually would you go into the next stitch and pull through and you're gonna do that you want it to you basically want to decrease it enough to where your beginning your last row is as is almost the same size as a hole down here really yeah, really you're gonna help me you're gonna help me make this donut you are are you gonna help pay the bills here sir you're not so you're just here to eat food and be cute and play okay so at the end as i mentioned before you want it to be closer it does not need to be perfect because what we're gonna do now is you're going to actually let's do a slip stitch here so we have a nice slip stitch here so you have a nice foundation and then create a semi long tail because we're going to be using this tail to actually connect the donut together so we have a nice donut sheep okay and so now we have i put the tail of the dough color inside now we have a nice tail this is probably the only sewing that is part of this so you're gonna get a wide eye tapestry needle and reason why it's wide eye so you can easily thread it i like to make this one tie here so i don't accidentally lose my needle as i'm putting it together and before you enter your fiber fill which is just like stuffed animal stuffing amigurumi stuffing whatever i like to actually complete a few stitches so i'm not accidentally sewing over the fiber fill because this is really easy when it's really small like this so i like to do a couple of stitches and then you're going to kind of just secure it so instead of just going in and out almost like you're creating a knot here and i did three stitches or so and then you're going to take a wee bits of fiber fill kind of make it thin like this so you can fill in your donuts and basically do that all the way around and i'll see you in the next step excuse me sir excuse me sir not only have you not contributed anything to these donuts no biscuit making nothing then you don't like to be recorded suddenly? Okay. So we have everything secured together. Now this is the part, if you were to make this into a keychain, you could actually use this part to actually sew a base off for a keychain. And I'll show that some other time, but I'm not making this for a keychain. So what you're gonna do is secure your last stitch by going in yarn over your tapestry needle so you create a knot and then kind of just secure it like that pull it so tight and then you're going to hide detail by just going into your work anywhere and pull through as such and then you can just snip it and you've got yourself a wee cute little weedle weedle donut 
And the last but not least part, this is the best part about making any bakery thing that has frosting. <laughs> so I like to use puffy paint to actually create the icing. So you're gonna get some nice, whatever color you want. In this case, I want it to be vanilla icing and I like to actually drizzle it. So let me make sure our donut is in the frame. Get in the frame. What you doing, donut? Ah! So after I'm done feeling at life, we're going to actually drizzle it. So I like to have it at a above a little bit, and then you're just gonna squeeze it. Make sure you have something underneath because that's gonna be kind of. I mean, this is how we end up with paint all over a table, unless that's a look you're going for, which I'm not here to judge. And then slowly, or not slowly, you're going to just drizzle it. And try to do this with a thing of puffy paint that's relatively full. You don't want to have a bunch of broken parts. That's not fun. And that is literally it. Leave it to dry. If you want to add sprinkles like this, which these little lemon pieces are actually nail art pieces, then you would add it. You might need a slightly thicker row like I did here if you're gonna add that. But this one I'm not gonna do that with. I am for, however, going to add a row of black because I want it to kind of have a Halloween donut vibe, but if you're adding more than one color, let your first color dry. Do not be impatient. Learn this the hard way. Patience doesn't pay off. You're gonna let that dry and then you've got yourself a little cute little donut. Thank you for visiting today for today's little cute little tutorial donut. Have a wonderful rest of your day and bye.